Hey, welcome back to our latest edition of TD Insights, a production of ATD Houston. My name is Bruce Abbott. I am the Vice President of Marketing and Communications for the Houston chapter. And of course, you've probably seen a lot of activity going on right now around our 2020 Talent Development Conference that we have going virtually. That is uh, just about a week away from this record date, October 27th and 28th. But the day after, we have a very cool uh, half-day workshop. It's called Transitioning Your Training, Designing and Deploying Training for Next Generation Leadership. And if you haven't had a chance, visit tdhouston.org and go sign up for that because it gives you an opportunity to learn about uh, taking this idea of conversations and conversational mastery and strategy and applying that into the workforce, into training. Now, what we do have with us today is Alex Fichera. Alex is uh, joining us today, and we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, this idea and about the workshop coming up. So, Alex, hey, thanks so much for joining us. Absolutely, Bruce. You know, I, uh, this is my passion, uh, talking with people, moving things forward about learning in general. So, uh, no better way to spend some time than with you on, on, on how we can just move things forward all together. Alex is uh, owner of, it's the Intuito Group, and that, that includes Skill Gym, correct? Correct. Skill Gym is a, a, a partner of ours, uh, gosh, a few years back. They're, they're based out of Switzerland. Um, really, really sort of the, the, the brains behind some of our really cool uh, technology platforms that we use in AI. And, um, uh, you know, they're like wizards. They're, re they're really cool to talk to, you know, plus you get that sort of, you know, that European connection. So it's always good to see what's going on across the pond. Now you are a former pro athlete turned business coach and anthropologist over 15 years, blending practices and principles used to excel in sports into the business arena, uh, which is always cool, uh, delivering authentic, reliable results, driven solutions, measuring success by the success of those around him. I love that. But what I love even more is this line that I pulled from uh, this write up here, bringing comfort in the uncomfortable. Oh, yes. I love that. I'm going to totally have to steal that. Um, <laughs> So tell me, so how did you get, and you mentioned before when we were just off camera there that, and, and you also come from a, a teaching background as well. I do. I, I have quite the eclectic, you know, we don't, I don't think we have enough time in this little chat to go through all the different things, but uh, that's been my sort of MO is to, um, to just really uh, step outside my comfort zone, experience a lot of different angles. And, and we were talking at uh, my time as an educator, I was teaching uh, ninth grade, I was teaching a college course to ninth graders. So you can imagine they're just transitioning into high school. Wow. All these different changes and challenges. And here I was trying to uh, teach them some college material and get them ready. So, but uh, really great stuff. And I was going to tell you one of the secrets of things I do now is I, I use a lot of the stuff I learned from back then, but uh, I don't necessarily tell, pe tell the adults that. <laughs> I was just talking with somebody yesterday whose fourth grade daughter had signed on to one of their virtual classes at the, they had changed and some of them went back face to face and they were on, she was on and she was sitting in there and she was noticing that some of her classmates had a lot of facial hair. <laughs> and uh, one had like a pink shaved head. And so she got on the little chat and she's like, I'm a fourth grade student. Am I in the right classroom? She was in some 11th grade science classroom. <laughs> I, can so I can only imagine the challenges with what's going on today. Yeah, um, I've got a few in there. And uh, I'll tell you what, the educators and, and the school systems, uh, they're doing a great job overall. They really are leveraging the things that they have. And uh, I mean, that's just, that's change in general. We all sort of have to go through phases and, and uh, be okay with mistakes and things like that. So, but, and uh, if there's anything that we have learned now is change is inevitable. I mean, look <laughs> yeah. at this dramatic shift that we've gone through just in the last few months in, in the workplace and that landscape. I mean, uh, it's, uh, it's been remarkable to work with companies, organizations, and teams and, 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 um, and really look at uh, leveraging a lot of the work they've done up to that point to see, you know, look, look, look look how you were able to see, not necessarily what specifically was going to happen, but that you were thinking about sort of how is your, your work environment and landscape going to change. So there were some things, but then um, it's like one of the, I love when, when times of challenge come because th they're opportunities. They're opportunities to, to kind of look in the mirror and, and really excel and go forward. If we don't have those opportunities, 
we're really sort of just spinning wheels and sort of staying static. So uh, I, I kind of help them shift that and really, you know, we got to lean into things. That's just the way it goes, you know. And that's really at the core of this workshop that yeah. you're leading coming up. I mean, you're talking about being able to um, to ride that change and 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 that it does require a different strategy now of, you know, from, from a training perspective. Um, tell me a little bit about kind of what we might see in this workshop. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. And, and thanks to, to ATD, you know, you, you all do such a phenomenal job um, going out there, listening to who's in the field and, and listening to, to those that are members, a part of it and, and seeking out some really great opportunities to, to, different ways of looking at things, where different industries are going. And, you know, we talk about the transition and I say next generation leadership and, and you know, the sort of the, the tap in is uh, we think about age demographics, right? We think about those mm -hmm. different, but really a, a lot of the next gen leadership is sort of in the way we think about how we create a, a model of training, right? Where, where, where is the actual uh, movement from development to performance and how do we shift the way we deliver? You know, it's it's one of those things, and I think others who are in the sort of same seat as me will say, we spend a lot of our times helping companies and organizations reassess the way they do. And, you know, coming from a training industry, we have to look at our own industry and do the same work. That's sometimes the difficult thing is to really put into practice and look at how is the training industry um, developing new ways and modes and new design to how we really get sticky with the material and get engagement going and really hit at the heart of, of, of what leaders are going to, you know, leverage and use um, to succeed in, in their next role. So uh, I'm super excited about, you know, showcasing some of the things that, uh, you know, um, you and I have talked about this a little bit, the, uh, the idea of conversational leadership, you know, it's one of those, uh, a lot of times people say, well, that's, it's, it's too easy of a concept to really go deep into it. It's like, no, but that's the point because it's so, it's so right in front. We all know it. Um, you know, we want to look at how do, we, um, how do we move into this sort of adaptable, you know, everything now with a little bit more remote, you know, how do we get into the pace of the everyday leader? You know, it's the number one excuse we get for, for why they can't do training is I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, we have to find a balance of, you know, cause if you ask anybody, you say, okay. Um, but would you say you never want to develop or train or invest in your own growth? Well, no, I can't do that either. So we're stuck with this polarity of I'm too busy to train. I know I need to train because I know what it means to my own growth. And, and, and we sort of have to look at how do we get the best out of both of those, not disrupt the busyness and getting the day-to-day -day things done, but then also find the opportunities to really um, um, grow and, you know, get to that stretch zone uh, versus that comfort zone. And in addition to the, the conversational mastery, now you bring a technology component oh, yeah. into it. I mean, how does, how does AI now kind of, how does that fit into the mold? Yeah, I can't say enough about the work Skill Gym has done. And it's, it's, it's been, when I first saw Skill Gym, I, I kind of had to step back and say, well, you know, am I a little crazy here? I haven't seen anything like this. And they really had done a great job at, um, at really leveraging technology in, in what I would say is the real right way, um, not overdoing it, not saying technology is going to solve all your problems, but bringing technology in and sort of uh, partnering it with the, the ways we've done things before. So, you know, all the, and I'll get to share so many case studies, which are just great that show us that, again, it's not an either or sort of deal. We have to find a way to marry these two, um, you know, technology and the, you know, the traditional knowledge learning, but Skill Gym and, and, and in the name Skill Gym, what they looked at the technology was how can we create a digital gym? Um, this, and this is where my sort of sports background came in is, as I transitioned, I looked at, you know, I looked at business leaders and, and, and companies and I said, oh, you all got it tough. See, we get like five, six days to train. We get to try on strategies, new skills, new things, and then we get to go perform in game day. Mm -hmm. Now, a coach would never say, you know what, it's game day. I want you to try on some new strategies out there. It's, it, it, no, don't do that. 
But in the business world, it was like, when does game day start and stop? And when does training happen? And it's like, it, it just came this pit stop learning. Every once in a while, you'd, you'd go train real hard and then stop and there'd be lulls. And it's like that sort of recall, that memory, that sort of ability to retain those, those skills and strategies, it wasn't there because there was no safe and really practical training environment. And they are leveraging AI technology to build just everyday stories on critical conversations, real interactions, tracking the, the just the most fundamental metrics and being able to deliver this, um, this really sort of, it, it's, uh, it's like uh, educators will tell you, it's like chunking material. You got to space it out over time, little bits and pieces. And over time, the habits take on and we get to see real transformation from just developing to actually performing when, when it comes time. And uh, those attendees of this workshop, they are going to be able to learn how to discover these strategies and, and develop them in there, Absolutely. correct? Absolutely. They, the strategies we'll talk about are really about how they can transform their own training models, how they can begin to incorporate some of these, um, these strategies of really getting uh, learned by doing, uh, really setting up adaptive scheduling techniques. So, um, you know, uh, you know, we know good habits that people have when it's in the calendar. How many people have told you when it's in the calendar, it'll get done. So uh, how can we set up this natural in the calendar of training? So it, we know it'll get done. How do we set up metrics? I, I, it's, it's tough to do, but it's amazing to see um, how many um, training programs aren't setting up measurements. Not so you can really see where the growth necessarily is or not. That's important. But the trainee needs to see their own growth. That's how they get even more engaged. They call it, uh, what is it? Uh, the acronym is FOMO, fear of missing out. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we have to tap into some of these and we see it already being done. But if we can remind ourselves and really kind of add those little strategies in over time, um, it's, it's hard to do them all at once, but over time, you, you'll start to th see things shift. You, you'll get some real traction going. And uh, it's amazing to see the engagement number. I can't wait to share most of these case studies um, that uh, Skill Gym has done, you know, 6 million different conversations, 300,000 trainees. I mean, there's some great data to really say, wow, you know, here's what we got. Now, I love to do this when, when I have speakers on and presenters where we have our, our upcoming events. I'm going to give you a moment to convince somebody who might be thinking, I don't know, man, should I, should I attend this? Should I not? Should I attend it? Why should they attend? That is a great, great question. Um, you should attend because I think ultimately it's it's your opportunity to get outside, you know, your own sort of, of bubble of what, what's coming in in this industry. Um, I work with a lot of people in the HR industry who don't get time themselves to train. They're so busy training and developing other people. Mm -hmm. It's like they don't get outside to see all these new sort of forms and ways and things that are doing it. And so I think it's an opportunity to step outside your own comfort zone and say, well, what if I do learn something else? What if I do find a new technique what does that mean to my employees and my team members um and so uh if you're if you're asking or whether or not you should attend is it gonna is it gonna stretch you is it gonna step you outside your comfort zone to learn something new if so you should probably attend and we are excited to have you it is a uh, a three-hour professional development online transitioning your training designing and deploying training for next generation leadership alex Thank you so much for uh, coming on here again today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you here in about a week uh, conducting the workshop. I can't wait. And good luck with the conference beforehand. I know there's some great speakers there. So you all are going to have a great time. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody. Great. Thank you.